Welcome to the Step Change podcast from me, Mike Foster, the Entrepreneur's Mentor. My podcast are my thoughts to help you with the development of your own business. And this Step Change podcast is a little bit different because today I've got one of my friends from my trusted network, Grant Hayward from Collaborant, and we're going to be talking about purposeful businesses. So in this business, I'm going to ask Grant some questions. We're going to have a a general conversation about purposeful businesses um, because Grant is the go-to expert, in my opinion, on this topic. So welcome, Grant. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, Mike. Really looking forward to it. So just to kick us off, I guess, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, introduce yourself and uh, a little bit about your background. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, as you say, my name is Grant Hayward. I've got a small consultancy business called Collaborant. Um, and I suppose to put all this into context, I spent the first 30 years of my career in a sort of a commodity trading business, uh, trading timber products, not very exciting. Um, I sort of, I suppose, like a lot of people, moved up the ladder, became a director and part owner, learned a huge amount. Um, we bought a couple of businesses and we were eventually uh, acquired. Um, I, I look back with fondness, but I don't, I don't miss the sector at all. But what really got me into this was that um, we relocated to Oxford 12 years ago, something like that. Um, I got a job with the company that acquired us as sales director for their training company based in Oxford here. But as part of that, I went on a leadership development program and it was a, it changed my life, really. It, it, the, the program asked me probing questions, asked us probing questions, but also took us around the county looking at... Um, Organisations, say, in the voluntary sector, supporting uh, people with challenges, uh, real significant social and environmental challenges. And I started to just think, really, I suppose I questioned my purpose, really. I started to think, you know, if I've got any experience and expertise, I really should be using it in a different way. So I took a significant change of direction, started actually working in a very modest role in the voluntary sector, connecting businesses and charities um and and that's really where i started to see the opportunities for businesses to be able to develop themselves and also contribute to society and the community back then um so that's really a history in terms of getting us to where we are now in terms of what i do now it's around supporting social enterprise as you say helping purposeful business Um, i came across the b corp movement uh, before it launched in the uk i trained with them and i'm now what they call a b leader Um, So supporting businesses to become B Corps if they choose to do that. Um, And I also really just try to operate in that space across sectors. So sitting, for instance, on the uh, Oxford Strategic Partnership Economic Growth Steering Board uh, and really trying to influence that and economic strategies locally that can really not only strengthen the economy, but also address some of the challenges that we've got. I could go on, but that, that sort of gives you a potted history, I think. So that's a great, uh, great introduction just to sort of set the scene, because, you know, I said that I see you as a go to expert. I think there's a lot of people in Oxfordshire that actually see you as the go to expert. I know you get pulled into a number of committees and a number of discussion groups to sort of share your thoughts. I'm really looking forward to sort of sharing that with the with the listeners today and really sort of talk about, you know, why businesses are sort of operating and developing a more positive social and environmental impact way of working I guess so what ways are you seeing things that are sort of changing or shifting amongst businesses at the moment then I think there's a couple of things really I think I mentioned social enterprise I think before and I've certainly been supporting social enterprise um within my journey I sort of have been uh, working with the LEP on some of their business support programs and that was a first introduction to the universities and the universities have been brilliant both universities are pushing out into the wider community support for social enterprise so we've seen a, re- a real uh, growth in social enterprises and for those that aren't aware social enterprises clearly are businesses but they're businesses that focus on a specific social or environmental challenge and usually retain most if not all the profits within the business now that's growing and uh, i was sort of instrumental in and in working with universities to get oxfordshire as recognized as a social enterprise county by social enterprise uk but if we look at mainstream business what we're seeing is that there's a there's been a, a shift anyway but certainly over this last year or so through the challenges that we've got businesses are recognizing that they're they're not just there to make a profit you know they've got more that they can do with their operation uh, and more positive impact on things rather than just making a profit and is it is it a good time for me to ask you the sort of burning question i've got really is it do you think there's a number of businesses that are perhaps jumping on the bandwagon in terms of the themes of sustainability or um, purposeful businesses you know how are you seeing it 
it's really difficult because you know I often have conversations <clears throat> with people, and I think, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm pro providing some support through a, one of the LEPS business support programs at the moment that's focused specifically on this area. And you find yourself, I mean, I, I did have the problem in the early stages of getting involved in this. I had a challenge with the corporate social responsibility thing. You know, we don't really hear it so much now, but CSR, or corporate social responsibility, and mm. for me it's misunderstood and under underutilized you know people sort of think I mean all of this is really important don't get me wrong and it's where I sort of started but you know supporting local charities and you do fantastic amounts with that I mean that is incredible and it really is important or employee volunteering but I think people think it starts and stops there and I think similarly with um, the purposeful business I think a lot of people claiming to be purposeful without really getting into the nitty-gritty and perhaps we'll talk in a bit about what that might look like and, and those things but the answer to your question is is yes. And um, I've, I've had this conversation with a few friends in this space. And initially, I get concerned about it, you know, someone looking to take an opportunity. But I think my faith tells me that we should welcome people getting involved in this stuff, for whatever reason, if it is personal gain, in the hope that once they do it, and you know what this is like, because you operate this way. But once you do it, you just you recognize how good it is and how how much you can get from it. So so yeah, I think there's some of that around, Mike, but I think we have to accept it and I think there'll be more. But if it brings more people to have more impact on society and the world, then you know, we, I think it's one of those things we have to put up with. Long answer to your question, I'm afraid. No, it's, well, it is a question I think we could do a whole podcast on, to be fair. Yeah. But I think really, think I've been really lucky and pleased to have been invited by Oxford Brooks University to get involved in some of their scale-up programmes. Um, it's, it's really surprising to see the businesses that are coming through that have got a sort of sustainability, sort of purposeful business sort of message behind the businesses that they're running. And are you seeing it as sort of a potentially a generational sort of thing? Well, it's really interesting, that because uh, my first reaction to that is it's not just the youngsters, because here I was just coming up to 50 and I decided that I wanted to do something different. And I think certainly, and we're definitely seeing that, particularly with what we've gone through, people are questioning what they're doing with their time and they really want to have more purpose in their own life but you're absolutely right I mean like you I mean my involvement with the university I had nothing to do with university really before that time that I talked to you about and seeing youngsters come out and like you I've sort of sat and supported them or, or sat on awards panels and what I like about it is that they don't have necessarily terms or phrases they just know they want to be in enterprise or business but they they, they want to do it in a way that has a positive effect on society so most definitely the youngsters, are, well, I wouldn't say they're leading the way, but they're a very strong influence. Um, lots coming out of both universities on that. But, but equally, I am absolutely inspired by some of the more mature businesses that are recognising the, their, their responsibility, I suppose, and the business opportunity, which really excites me as an entrepreneur, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, great, great summary. And I think, um, I think before we sort of move on, I, I'd like perhaps your definition, actually, of what is a purposeful business? If you can sort of frame that in in a, in a couple of sort of sentences, because I think that is the big confusion, isn't it? What is a purposeful yeah. business? What we're talking about today? It's really difficult. I mean, I, I when we and I know this isn't the question you asked, but when you come to social enterprise, and we won't get into the detail, but certainly with social enterprise, a lot of people claim to be social enterprises, when I, I think technically they're not. I always look to social enterprise UK's definition of that, and that does include things like. Um, asset locks where profit tends to stay in the business but but in terms of your question I think again perhaps we shouldn't be too uh, prescriptive but it is important for people to understand in simple the way I would describe it in simplest terms a purposeful business is a business that places all stakeholders on the same level as shareholders and what's been happening uh, for many years in that famous a phrase about you know the only reason for business to be in place is to satisfy shareholders is just not the way it works these days and so businesses need to be considering their workforce their communities the environment you know even the supply chain um, and also the way they're governed the opportunities that the workforce have in terms of contributing to the way that the business runs so and we haven't mentioned it yet well we've touched on it but b corp is a good they don't like it called model, but if you, if anyone wants to have a look at the B Corp, um, it's a free tool you can look at, the B Impact Assessment. It helps you look at all the areas of your business to start to embed these. And I have to say, you know, there is no perfect business out there. And even those that become B Corp certified are still striving to be even better. But so, so getting back to your point, it's about the first and foremost recognising this is about 
all stakeholders, not just shareholders, and then working on the business to, to, to make sure that that comes into play, if you like. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. I think that's just really important to get your view on that. So we sort of got position that through. Now, we were talking about the sort of the change in and the, what's shifting amongst businesses at the moment. And, you know, is it is it a priority amongst businesses? You know, what have you seen over perhaps the pandemic? Have you sort of seen that actually it's been put on the back burner, this sort of thing at the moment? You know, what, what, what's your experience? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think, you know, going back to that whole that whole CSR thing, really, I think, uh, you know, and Certainly, I've seen situations where people have looked at that stuff as you do it as an add on, as a bolt on. And I've even heard it said, well, we're in a position now where we've made money and we can afford to do this. It's just not the case. And I think what we're seeing is so I'm definitely going to say to you, the answer to your question is no. I mean, some people will view it that way. They're, they're definitely, I mean, at the end of the day, Mike, we know what it's like. Hopefully, we're coming out at the end of this. But, you know, businesses are looking at survival and, and they're looking at making sure that they can keep going. And I understand that. I think really, though, what I would say is that there are opportunities. Actually, some of your biggest problems can be your biggest opportunities. And if we think about it, you know, people want to work for organisations like this. They want to buy from organisations like this. They even want to invest in organisations like this. So, you know, even in these difficult times, it's exactly the time to be reviewing your business and thinking, how can we make this business more than just making sure that it returns uh, money for the, the shareholders? That's what people, that's what everyone's looking for. Yeah, and I, and I wonder actually, just some of the businesses I've seen actually, you know, that they've obviously had a bit of a downtime in terms of the pandemic, but it's a, an opportunity where they sort of st stood back from the day to day that they were in and said, well, actually, how do we do, how do we differentiate going forward when we when we come out of this pandemic? How are we going to thrive? How are we going to be different? And it's really interesting how people are thinking about sustainable models and, you know, purposeful business, if you like, to to be that differentiation. Is that, is that something you're seeing? Uh, yeah, I, I, definitely. I think, well, I, in fact, I'm seeing it on a number of different levels. I think I've said already, you know, we're, we're, we're delivering. So OSEP, in fact, I've mentioned OSEP actually, but I've mentioned the university is looking to support social enterprise initially, but there's a social enterprise called OSEP that I've been supporting for a number of years. It's, 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 it's established and it's now working with the lab to deliver this business support program. So through that, I'm seeing people that want to set up businesses that make a difference, that I've said to you before, they're, they're, they're either in businesses possibly thinking that they might be social enterprising but, but recognizing that they want to do more so that's those mature businesses as well but definitely mike i think we you know we are seeing people saying hang on a second all and particularly with all what's happened is you know, there's more to life than this you know there's more to business than this how can we do it and i think the other thing that helps is we're, we're very fortunate locally but it's happening elsewhere as well but when you do see some great examples of the way businesses are embracing this stuff and putting it, putting it into practice in a way that makes commercial sense you know it's not this isn't just about philanthropy and doing something oh God, the other thing that i really can't stand is people that and forgive me for those that use it because i know they use it in the right way but people talk about giving back and i i always say to them what have you taken you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I, sh I shouldn't laugh and I shouldn't make fun of it because I know it's for the right intent. But, you know, all of this stuff is just about operating a business the way it should be operated and everyone benefits from it. You know, what's not to like about that? So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm just seeing it on a lot of different levels from startup through to sort of growing businesses and also even the mature businesses. And it's a lot more difficult for the mature businesses to change. But once they do that, you know, the difference is incredible. And uh isn't, isn't this something that just the larger businesses do, you know, because, you know, you tend to think, well, actually, it's the large corporates that have got the time and the money to do this sort of, this sort of change or this type of thing. Is it, yeah, is it no, just I, for large businesses or is that a perception? I think it is a perception, and, and particularly when it comes to this B Corp movement, you know, the B Corp movement started in the States. And just very quickly on that, actually, it's probably worth saying that mm. where this came from, the founders came over here a good few years ago now before they launched in the UK and they told their story in uh, an event in Oxford. And, you know, they were three fellas that come out of Stanford or Harvard or one of those, and they set up a sports apparel business. They built it with all of this stuff absolutely embedded. They grew it. It was really successful. They sold it. And within a year, it had the heart ripped out of it, is my understanding of the story. And they turned around and said, you know, what can we do about this? We really want to do something different. And that's what made this movement start. And in fact, in the States, there is a legal entity, a, a legal form called a B Corp. And in fact, we're going to be seeing there's some stuff coming through sort of over the next year uh, sorry over the next month or so around this sort of um legal stuff we'll perhaps come back to that um 
so yeah so with the b corp movement um when it launched over here a lot of people and you see big companies you know you see the likes of a Danone, a, a B Corps, and some of the bigger companies. And so, uh, so a lot of people think of that. But, you know, in Oxfordshire here, we know, don't we? We've got 30,000 businesses, and most of them aren't like that at all. So even if you're a sole trader, you can certify as a B Corp. If you're a small business or a sole trader, you can do this stuff. You know, it's, it's in lots of different ways. And I think this is the other thing. It's for you to choose what suits your business best. Um, all sorts of things that can, that can be done. Mm. Yeah, no, I think even if there's one takeaway from the podcast already, I think it's about, you know, that it, this isn't just for large businesses. And I think, you know, when you talked about B Corp businesses in the past, it was like you say, it was the larger business, the larger corporates were doing it. But as you say, and I think you know, that's a credit to yourself in terms of, you know, you bringing it onto the agenda, I think into Oxfordshire, the amount of businesses that are now thinking about this sort of certification, how they can make the certification more easier to achieve as well. Well, I'm not going to take the credit for that, Mike. I mean, I just, I just want to be a champion for it. I think, it's, it's, and all I do, it's easy for me. I just talk about other people that are doing fantastic stuff. But just going back to the smaller businesses as well. What this is, this is a message actually that, that I think really needs to get out to the smaller businesses. Is you know, so often the smaller businesses will think it's not for me. So if you take one example. So it's been around for a while, but there's a there's a thing called the Social Value Act. Now some people might have heard of it, but the Social Value Act obligates anyone spending public money to consider the social value that's added to that contract. So some of these big contracts that are awarded to these big organizations, they to when they bid for them, and they're ahead of the game, to be honest with you. I mean, we've just seen recently the city council introduce a social procurement policy, which is brilliant. So now when people are bidding, they have to declare what they're gonna be doing to add social value. It's taken some time to come, but it's coming. Now, those bigger companies will be subcontracting. And a lot of those smaller businesses will be asked questions about what they can do in terms of adding social value. So even if the smaller businesses that might not be bidding for the bigger contracts, their customers will be asking more and more questions about it. And in fact, I'm doing a little bit of work at the moment and they're happy for me to talk about it, but the University of Oxford is looking at its procurement um, side of things to see how it can add social value. You know, they've got some big um, suppliers but those suppliers in turn will be buying from elsewhere. So the more questions that are asked, the more, and, and it's opportunity. It's a chance of really di differentiating yourself and saying, buy from us, look what we do. You know. Mm. You, men you mentioned earlier in um, one of your responses, which was there's a number of great examples going on for smaller businesses within you know, our county of Oxfordshire. So is there any of those you're able to share that you'd sort of like? It's highlight if you like it? I, I really don't want to single any out because I'm just a great supporters of all of them and, and I really yeah. don't want to I will, I will but I, I, I don't want to um, I, I think probably the first thing I'd say before I answer it specifically I think one of the things and this might sort of feed into I don't know we might come on to it but what people can do if you take something like diversity you know a lot of people talk about diversity if I think about me as an employer I'd like to think that I was a, a supportive employer a good employer um, it, but I would go through CVs and look to, for chips and chinks and things that weren't perfect. I'd probably even look for people like me. Um, and I, I really, it's not since I've been in this space that I've started to realise that there are people that have come from sort of some quite challenging backgrounds who have been supported by some fantastic organisations. And I'll come on to those as in terms of the examples, but they've been supported back to being ready for work and having been supported through there, you know, they can be some of the most tenacious, creative, resilient, loyal people that we need, you know, that employers need. I wouldn't have considered that at all before. So people perhaps that have had homeless issues or drug and alcohol issues or even been imprisoned, you know, uh, they can be really good em employees. And I think the other thing is as well in terms of diversity is we think of, gender and ethnicity but you know neurodiversity there are people on the autistic spectrum who are being supported by groups who have got so many qualities that people like me haven't got you know and i would never have seen that through this so getting to answer your question mm. the sorts of businesses that i like people like i mean everyone talks about it but aspire oxford are doing some fantastic stuff they're a social enterprise and they're probably not so much a purposeful business but they're doing fantastic work helping people back in the workplace but Tap Social, you know, in Botley there, they're doing some brilliant stuff working with ex-offenders. Um, there's a company called You Underwear, which um, is a very ethical underwear company that has got a cause. It's, it's one of those sort of buy one, give one. Um, 
Sarah, who set that business up, um, recognized a problem in certain areas of Africa where young women just didn't have any underwear. So she wanted to do something about it. I'd also say, you know, I mean, it's not a typical example, but Blenheim are just, the people at Blenheim are fantastic. I, many would look at that and say, that's not a business. Uh, it's not a typical business, but the principles of the way they adopt, and you don't hear much about it. You know, I'm, I know them well, and I, I've been sort of facilitating some of the stuff with them, uh, but they do some brilliant stuff and stuff that other businesses can learn from. And there's actually another good little example, Orange Bakery in Wallingford. Have a look at them. Wonderful business. So I don't know. I could go on forever and I shouldn't pick people out, but some great examples. And I, and I know you don't like to pick people out. And I, and I, I apologise for putting you on the spot there to, to name a few, but it was just, a, I guess, putting it into context, the sort of things that the businesses in Oxfordshire are doing that aren't sort of the large corporates. I just want well, to jump back. No, just, just, yeah, just one quickie that's probably worth mentioning as well. He's, um, you know, I'm sitting here in Entrum actually, and and um, Renee Watson of Curiosity Box, I know you know, and has been featured. Um, yeah, I love it. She, yeah, she does some brilliant stuff. You know, so there she is. She's selling these Curiosity boxes. She, she's selling a product, but she's absolutely determined that those products can get to people that can't afford them. And she's working really creatively, doing some great work with big companies, getting some collaborations that are good for her business, but gets that product to people that can't afford it. So I just could go mm. on. <laughs> mm. oh, you, you've named some of my favourites. You know, I love yeah. Curiosity Box. I, I love having a beer with you in uh, Tap Social. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I've not tried the underwear yet, but we're, we're, we'll have to try that one in due course. I want to jump back to the um, the B Corp stuff, because you mentioned earlier that you're a B leader. So what, what, yes. what, does, what does that mean? What does that involve? How does that support businesses? Yeah, so so in fact, I mean, anyone, actually, this is the important thing. When I, when I first came across the B Corp movement, I was a little bit cynical. First of all, you know, bloody Americans coming over here telling us how to run businesses and <laughs> realising they're not like that at all. They've just got a movement. They say, if you want to be part of it, this is what we do. This is what we feel to join us. Um, I think the other thing is that they, they're very open, that the, the organisation that runs it over here is a charity. It's a not-for-profit. And they have an online tool called the B, that's the letter B, impact assessment that you can go look for i'd just urge any business just to get on there and it, it asks you lots of questions about your business and it's a great way for any business to sort of start to look at the ways in which it can develop um, itself um i forgot the question mike sorry so uh, you're, B you're, yeah b leader yeah so so you know anyone can do this stuff on their own they can go and look to become a b corp by using that tool but there are lots of tricky questions there's a lot of resources that can be used. There's a lot of pooling that can happen, really. So us as B leaders, we work together collaboratively, we learn and share together, and we're there to be on hand, really, to help businesses as a critical friend, help them with a bit of a roadmap, and you know, to be there to check in with, um, and to sort of take the sort of uh, challenges that come from, from this. You know, it's not, I think it's, I had this conversation this week with someone, it obviously takes some work to get through it, but it's worth it. But it's not what, what the way it needs to be looked at is this isn't a question of saying, well, OK, let's do this extra stuff. Everything in it is about running a business well. So it will look at policies. It will start questioning your policies and stuff like that. Things a business you should have anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah, no, great. And um, I guess hopefully I'm not going to put you on an awkward spot, but just name a couple of B Corps in, in Oxfordshire that we can look at and say, OK, that's the type of B Corp business. and. Yeah. So uh, recently, C Corp Print, I think a lot of people know about C Corp Print, you know, they've for a while now, they've been global leaders in that sector. Um, I think they're the highest scoring B Corp globally in their sector now. So they've recently become a B Corp. Um, and funnily enough, you wouldn't necessarily think of it as a local business, but Myers-Briggs is another example. You know, they've got a local presence, they're a global business, but they became a B Corp. And actually, that's a good example. Myers-Briggs will tell you, um, you know, head of HR there, Will, he says that the, 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 the way that the the, the employees responded to that and wanted to get involved and are really now bought into this is just quite incredible. So yeah, Seacorp, Myers-Briggs, uh, Ella's Kitchen, if you're, well, I'm a granddad now, so um, yeah. down in Henley and Kitchen <laughs> Food. I, again, I, I don't like picking them up. And it's, it's also another important point is actually Oxfordshire was also one of the first, we think the first, one of the first B locals. So I'm co-chair of the Oxfordshire B local it's Oxfordshire plus because it's the surrounding route sounding regions and that's a sort of a group of people that are b corps or b leaders and we've also got a linkedin group that anyone's welcome to, to join really so look out for that 
Great. And I was uh, I was talking to a good a, a good mutual friend that we have, uh, Paul Mabbott, who runs uh, Jennings uh, over at Chalgrove, and uh, I know they're going sort of looking at this and going through that process as well. Um, they are, yeah, great example. Jennings are a brilliant example of doing. They, they, I mean, they're a business that have been doing this for years anyway, just because it's the right thing to do, and yeah, just really using the B Corp thing as a way of formalising, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, and as you say, uh, just yep. So uh, that's really quite useful. One of the things I wanted to explore really it was a question that was asked on my social media when I said that I was going to be interviewing you for the podcast today. And it was the question was, what would be your first tip to a mature commercial business that wanted to start a purposeful journey? Yeah, well, funnily enough, I think probably the first thing to do, I mean, do perhaps do a little bit of research, but certainly that B Impact Assessment Tool, you know, I would say that that is a, a really useful way. Uh, you know, all you need to do is just to register for an account and you can start looking at the sorts of areas. And I think that's the thing for me that's the most important thing for businesses to realize the wide range of ways they can be more purposeful. You know, it's not just about I mean, it's an awful thing to say, but not just about doing a bit of recycling or um, or supporting a local charity. It does include that, but loads of other ways, really. And the questions that you get asked about what you're doing in those areas trigger you thinking, well, actually, we could do this, we could do that. The other really important thing I think is, is so important is, is get the, the, the staff involved, because once you get the staff involved and you start talking to them about going on this journey, you know, they'll, they'll end up driving it for you, really. Um, mm. Yeah. Interesting you mentioned about the trigger. Okay. It's it's many, many times this conversation with you, I think, that sort of triggers thoughts in terms of, you know, the, as I said to you when we were um, talking offline before the podcast, is that even, even though I've had great conversation with you and I think I understand purposeful and social responsibility, you know, sometimes I can get led down the, the wrong path as well. So I think it's having conversations with these people like yourself just triggers thoughts about how you can make those differences in your business. So I guess if anyone's inter- if anyone who's listening today is interested in you know this you know this topic of purposeful businesses what what would you suggest that they should do? Yeah, well as I've said already I think you know look at the B Corp website B Corp UK um, actually on YouTube, they've got some fantastic videos. Funny, if you mentioned Paul Mabbott, Paul and I went to a, an event that the B Corp uh, or the B Lab team held in London. And, you, you know, it was on the embankment by Tower uh, Bridge. And, you know, when you're in there, you'll, you see the video. You'll, you, I mean, I, it brings a tear to my eye now and, that, and it brings sort of puts the hairs on the back of my neck up. But, you know, being amongst 600 other like-minded businesses, you know, you and I do a lot of networking and, and I to be careful with the listeners out there, you know, it's lovely to be amongst people and boy, do we look forward to that again. But, you know, in there, there's often a mixed crowd, you know, you're not necessarily everyone on the same page, but when you're amongst 600 people that are coming from the same place, it's incredible. Anyway, there's a video there to look at. So B Corp UK, the B Impact Assessment that I've said to you before, um, certainly the OSEP website, that's OSEP, so www www.osep.org.uk um, and the Escalate program really. Um, Oxlep is still running this. We've got a year to go, so have a look at Os- Escalate under the Oxlep page. There's support there for businesses that are on this journey as well. You know, you don't have to be there if you want support getting there. Then, then that. And then finally, really connect with me on LinkedIn or my email address, which is grant at collaborant.co.uk. Excellent. And uh, the Oxlep grant that you mentioned, that's got some f- sort of fund funding support as well as um well yeah support. interestingly it's been, it, it 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 was slow to be taken up but um we're in the last phase now so there's, there's just just one more grant round so it's it's probably going to be a bit late for people to come into that but the, i would i would recommend people to look at the let grant funding page because there's a range of grants on there that not necessarily for this but for other things as well so yeah great thanks grant um appreciate your time today to share a little bit of your expertise skill and knowledge around purposeful businesses is there any last comments you'd like to sort of share with the listeners no just thanks very much mike and you know it, it like i've said to you all i do is is talk about other people you know you do some fantastic stuff you really and you've been doing it for a lot of years so people like you and jennings and so many others blenheim i just love pulling out examples okay yeah i might try to come up with some ideas and influence people but it's a great movement to be amongst and if i think if i compare going back to this, where we started you know if i look back at my journey and where i was and what i'm doing now i just i'm just like a I, I, it's not work really i'm just amongst friends talking about stuff i love so what's not to like but thanks for your th- th- thanks for the opportunity and anyone interested i'd love to have a conversation 
Brilliant, Grant. Thanks again. Thanks for your time. And uh, anybody who's listening, if you want to check Grant out on LinkedIn, as he said, or collaborant.co.uk, and he gave his uh, email address earlier as well. So thanks again, Grant. Thanks for joining us for this latest Step Change podcast. You've been listening to Mike Foster, the Entrepreneur's Mentor, interviewing Grant Hayward from Collaborant on the topic of purposeful businesses. Uh, please do subscribe to my podcast. And next time I release a new episode, you'll be one of the first to know.